was part two of lesson four about exposure and relationship between aperture, shutter speed and ISO and how they influence the picture. If you didn't see the part one, I highly recommend you to see it. And also it would be much more helpful for you if you would see my lesson one about aperture, lesson two about shutter speed and lesson three about ISO because in this lesson we are summarizing everything we learned before. So let's get started on part two. You should also keep in mind that the amount of light is not the only thing influenced by aperture, shutter speed and ISO. There are other things which are influenced by those three parameters. The aperture influences also depth of field or how much of the image will appear in focus. The smaller the aperture opening, the more depth of field you will get, the more of the image will appear in focus. Also, when you take a picture of a moving subject, you want to use the faster shutter speeds. The faster the subject is moving, the faster shutter speed you will need to freeze the action. The ISO influences the quality of the image. The smaller the ISO, less noise you'll get. To see how aperture influences the depth of field and shutter speed influences the moving subject, let's take a few pictures of this music box. As you can see, when you put money in it, the car starts to move. So we will be taking pictures of it while the car is moving. I took these pictures using my 50mm lens. This particular lens is famous by its wide aperture opening and the shallow depth of field created by it. The range of aperture in this lens is from f1.4 till f16. Let's start with its widest aperture and the faster shutter speed first. So for this picture we used f1.4 and shutter speed 1 500 of the second. Because we used the wide aperture opening, we got shallow depth of field. As you can see, background is out of focus, blurry. Also, because we used fast shutter speed, we were able to freeze the action and we freeze the car which was moving. Now I will be Closing down my aperture, making it smaller, and then I will make my shutter speed slower. While I'm doing this, please pay attention how the image changes. Pay attention to the background and also pay attention to the moving car. You can replay this even twice if you will not notice the difference so fast. I hope you had noticed that while I was closing my aperture, the background was getting more clear and more sharp because the smaller the aperture, the more depth of field I get, the more of the image appears in focus. Also, as I was making my shutter speed slower, the car got a blur because it was moving and the slower the shutter speed the more difficult it is to freeze the movement. So in final picture where I have a shutter speed one fourth of the second you can see that car is totally blurred out because of the movement. And then you can also see that the background is sharp because I used F16 which is small aperture. As you probably already understood, the, one of the main keys to good photography is balancing settings of aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And you will have to set your priorities when you want to balance them. You have to decide what is more important for you. If you want to have a shallow depth of field or you want to have a broad depth of field, 
where more of the image appears in focus. Are you taking picture of the moving subject? Or you're taking picture handheld in the camera and you don't want to use shutter speed lower than 1 60th of the second. Or you can put your camera on the tripod and you can use slower shutter speeds. Or you want to get as less noise as possible and then you want to keep your ISO as small as possible. So all those things you have to consider when you're taking a picture. And I will give you one example just to show you how you make those decisions. Let's say I'm taking a portrait of the person. For the portrait, the main thing which I want to achieve is a depth of field, shallow depth of field, where person appears in focus and background appears blurry, out of focus, so there is no distraction behind the person. To get the shallow depth of field, I will have to use wide aperture opening, which is small f number. For this portrait, I decided to use f4. As you can see, it worked pretty good. f4 is pretty good. wide aperture opening. So I took my camera. I had my camera I saw set to 100. Because I was shooting outside, my conditions were pretty bright and I wanted to get the best picture quality possible, so I set it to 100. Then I set my aperture to a 4 since aperture was more important to me than shutter speed, so I set my aperture first to get a shallow depth of field. Then I looked through my viewfinder. And remember, at the beginning of the lesson, I was talking about the meter which is inside the camera, which meters the light. And for good picture, you want to get this meter as close to the zero as possible. So, I started to scroll my shower speed back and forth. And I tried to set my meter to close to the zero as possible. When my meter got to the zero, that shutter speed I used for my picture. But you have to keep attention that your shutter speed when you hand hold the camera is not lower than 1 60th of the second. For this picture, uh, my perfect shutter speed ended up to be 1 1 25th of the second, which was totally fine for this picture. But if my shutter speed would appear lower than that, let's say my conditions are not that bright, and in not that bright conditions, my shutter speed had a chance to appear lower than 1 60th of the second, then I would choose to have my ISO higher. I hope this information was helpful for you and not too confusing. And I will give you more examples in my future lessons so you can learn more about photography and be more confident while taking the pictures. So I see you next time.